Unit 13, Indoor Gardening. What is indoor gardening? Well, obviously, growing any plant indoors would be indoor gardening. But for our purposes, we're going to concentrate mostly on edible crops grown indoors. And that's indoors, whether it's in atriums or in windows or under lights, artificial lights. Um, however, since greenhouse growing of vegetables is already well established, um, we're going to concentrate on growing in locations other than dedicated greenhouses. So what are some of the issues with indoor gardening? Well, it's very, very different from growing crops outdoors for several reasons. First, the light is usually much more limited indoors, even in a south-facing window. Um, you have a south-facing window, the light comes from one direction to uh, strike the plants. Outdoors, the light comes from all around. And it's usually much more intense outside on the other side of the windows. Space is also usually much more limited indoors than outdoors. Not always the case. If you're an apartment dweller, for instance, you may have zero space outdoors. So your indoor space is bigger. But generally for gardening, we have limited space inside the house. Um, soil or growing media used in indoor growing, whether for uh, decorative plants or for crops, has to be brought in, mixed appropriately, and is usually also available in smaller amounts than in an outside garden where the whole thing is soil. If you're growing under lights, then the cost of the fixtures, the cost of the bulbs, and the cost of electricity also have to be taken into account. And finally, growing containers have to be well designed for the area that they're put in to prevent soil and water leaking. Maybe not a big deal, say, in a dedicated greenhouse where the water can leak out onto the floor and it's not a problem, but in a house or apartment, uh, it's a big deal. So what are advantages of growing indoors? Well, as we mentioned before, people in apartments and condos may have zero space outside. So growing indoors, there's a place for a garden. Crops can often be grown in the off season. You can get things in wintertime, fresh vegetables in winter rather than having to wait for the growing season outside. Crop pests such as weeds and insects are usually much less problematic indoors. And because of their usually smaller size, indoor gardens are often easier to maintain. Again, you have fewer weeds and fewer insects. Often the only maintenance required is occasional pruning of the plants if they need that and uh, watering. And finally, plants grown indoors help clean indoor air. And this is not a uh, small benefit. This can be a major thing, um, which you'll see uh, in one of the video assignments for this unit. So what methods are used to grow crops indoors? Well, there are a lot of methods um, but the two most common are container gardening and hydroponics. Um, in a greenhouse or a hoop house, growing plants could be planted directly in the ground. They could also be planted in containers or they could make use of hydroponics. We'll look at both the container gardening and hydroponics um, next. Container gardening is exactly that. It's growing plants in containers. But there are some things to consider. First, soil that's perfectly adequate or even excellent soil in outdoor gardens is usually not at all suitable for containers. For various reasons, the soil used in containers has to be much more porous than regular garden soil. This usually means that Container soil has to be heavily amended with things like peat moss, perlite, or composted shredded bark, something like that. Or you can purchase ready-made potting soil, not 
bags of garden soil. Um, many growers, indoor growers, use a completely soilless mix. No actual soil is used at all um, in order to achieve that porosity and also to reduce weight. Then the containers are easier to move um, if you have a lightweight mix. Containers can be just about anything, regular flower pot types, recycled containers of all sorts, from plastic jugs or, you know, plastic like Tupperware type trays, um, or they can be specially built to suit the purpose and the space available. Now, this slide shows a uh, plastic uh, flower pot type container filled with potting soil. Okay, now notice the white particles of perlite scattered through as a soil amendment and also pieces of shredded, uh, shredded bark. Those things help maintain the porosity of the soil when you use regular soil for a uh, indoor growing so, or, or container growing. It, it, the same is true outdoors, in fact. If you grow in containers outdoors, you still need a highly amended soil, regular soil dug up from the yard or from an outdoor garden usually um, isn't sufficient. Hydroponics. Well, hydroponics is growing plants where their roots are in a nutrient solution, either with or without an inert medium like perlite, mineral wool, expanded clay pellets, or similar things. Um, in some hydroponics, the roots are simply hanging down into uh, trays of, of liquid, of water with nutrient solution in it. Um, in other hydroponic setups, um, these inert mediums are used to give some support to the root systems of the plants. Here we see a hydroponic system, and it uses expanded clay pellets, which are these round balls. They're uh, clay molded into these balls, baked at high temperatures that causes them to uh, sort of pop and expand. Also makes them quite inert and they don't fall apart or dissolve uh, when the nutrient solutions go in. Nutrient solutions flow up from the center post and then out through the various tubes to the pots. This uh, particular system can also uh, be rotated allowing uh, the plants to receive uh, light from all directions. This is a, a simple and small system for hydroponics that could be used uh, in a house or an apartment. Here's another hydroponic system. And notice the tray that the, uh, the man's working on here. And this tube that comes up feeds into the tray. It pumps in and uh, recycles um, the uh, nutrient solution. And it would appear in this case that the plants, and here you see some, some lettuce in this tray, um, are planted over holes in a medium and there may be no uh, inert growing medium underneath there. This may just simply be plastic, um, but there may well be a nutrient solution in there. Notice though that regardless of what's underneath, the surface of the trays, the trays themselves are light colored white plastic for maximum reflection of light, making the most use of the light that's available. Notice also that this back wall is uh, mirrored 
for the same reason, to reflect that light. Actually, the wall goes all the way down to here. Finally, um, here are strawberries grown hydroponically. And they're grown in these troughs overhead that look very much like uh, rain gutters in this case. Um, they, these troughs need to be supported. And you can kind of see right here next to this line I'm drawing between the two lines a uh, support uh, system that would hook onto this and hold it up. Um, inside the troughs, there's a media, an inert media, to give the roots some support and through which the nutrient solution flows. The nutrient solution can be introduced at one end of the pipe and then will flow via gravity to the other end. And then somewhere outside the picture, a tube taking it down to a pump of some sort, which can pump it back up to the other end. By growing the plants overhead, and as the strawberries grow, um, they're heavier than the plant, uh, plant leaves, they tend to hang down. It makes harvesting uh, quite easy. And finally, um, here's a method of uh, hydroponics using straw bales. Now, these straw bales uh, provide very little nutrients to the plants. They're simply a support system for the roots. You can see the uh, tomato plants and their roots will spread all through the straw bales. And uh, though it's a little difficult to see, the center of the aisle here is a little higher than where the straw bales are on either side. Nutrient solutions, and it's easier to see here on the uh, right-hand side, uh, just to the right of that line that I just drew, uh, you'll see a black tube. That tube carries the nutrient solution and drips it into the hay bales, keeping the hay bales moist. Um, the solution then is contained in this lower area where the hay bales are uh, as it leaks out and it can be absorbed back up into the hay and the roots can make use of it. Um, very simple, straightforward system of uh, using hydroponics. Um, that will finish uh, part one of this unit.